I want to start off tonight's podcast, you know, with a disclaimer. Because, you know, I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm, I'm, I'm pissed off. I mean, so I'm going to try my best, you know what I'm saying, to, to, you know, contain this rage, you know, in my spirit. So, you know what I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for reading, you know, George Jackson and, you know, learning his concept of control rage, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to apply that as best tonight. You know, in this podcast, because you know, I'm 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 feeling, you know, and I'm, I know I'm a cuss, you know, what I mean, t- tonight. So excuse me, you know, what I mean, but you know, this is just one of those moments where, you know, it's like the gloves off, man. It's like, you know, you know, I, I you know, I, you know, I love listening, listening to Malcolm X's speeches, and, and I love listening to him deliver them because, you know, out of all of the people who, you know, I've listened to over the years, you know, and it's important to, you know, listen to those people of the past, you know, while we still got YouTube, you know, and you quarantine, you know, please check out, you know, all of the speeches of Malcolm, check out all of the speeches of Dr. King, check out all of the footage on the Panthers, check out all of the footage on Garvey, all of the footage on Amiri Baraka, all of the footage, you know, that you can get Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Ben, Cornell West, Mumia Abu Jamal, Asada Shakur. Learn these people. They were important then in their walks. In continuous and perpetual combat, you know something. I think we we you know if 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 we connect J. Edgar Hoover's vision for you know dismantling black consciousness, you know, or the fervor behind black consciousness. If that was his end goal, he, he, he accomplished that. He accomplished that. And it took, and it took flooding. You know, our people were a protest people, a people that changed the constitution of the United States of America. Probably, you know, a feat larger than any uh, feat we've, we accomplished in this diaspora, you know, the American segment of our diaspora. So, I'm, I'm, I'm pissed off tonight. You know, so, you know, it's gonna be kinda jagged tonight, you know, cause I'm, I'm operating off raw energy. You know what I'm saying it's like you know when King was arrested, you know the the famous Birmingham letter. You know many marveled over it. You know he 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 wrote that on you know on that on what napkins, uh, you know toilet paper. Or so that's what I've read. And you know he 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 was responding to. You know, a group of white ministers, you know, clergy, you know, who were, you know, trying to uh, tell him that, you know, you're you're, you're agitating, you're agitating, uh, you know, violence, you know, through your speech, through the, the truth you're speaking, you know, and you know, you know, it's not the time to do that, you know, and that that message, you know, it's not time to do that. I hate that, I hate that phrase. It's not time to do that. You know, we're probably in this boat as a Democratic Party, uh, uh, and I say Democratic Party, because, you know, black people, we have, we have, we have, we have given our, you know, soul, our vote consistently to this party, you know, that 
has professed to be our champion. But yet, here we are in 2020. And 8,000 blacks in America right now are dead. 8,000 black Americans are dead. Okay? Out of 16,000 total American victims deaths to the coronavirus. And, you know, so we're talking about a population, you know, black people only only make up, you know, like 30 million people in America. Only. You know, give or take a mill or two. You know, there's a, there's almost 300 million people in America. 300 million plus. And, you know, this random global Ellie. You know, this extinct this is a, this is an a, this is an extinction level event. This random Ellie shows up. In 2020, after probably one of the most unprecedented dog fights American politics has probably ever seen. The level of hatred, expressed hatred between Democrats and Republicans at the highest levels of government in America is, is so obvious to all of us. That, you know, just listening to any of them speak about the other almost forces a gag reflex. Eight thousand. That's one in every two deaths to coronavirus, a black American. And, and we have been, we are so, yo, we are so disconnected, you know, from that legacy, that protest legacy. We are so disconnected from that. You know, it's like they bludgeoned. It's like, it's like our whole culture was standing on his feet, yelling black, I'm black and I'm proud with a big, Afro power fist. You know, think about the voice of Rap Brown. Angela Davis. That proud black man and black woman that stood in defiance of American oppression and tyranny was like smacked in the back of the head with Nagin's back. That's what crack did to us. Let's keep it real. I'm sick of hearing politicians, you know, you know, try to talk charged. You no know, straight capitalists. Straight capitalists. Country just told the world that 8,000 black people died. And then you hear a, a doctor say, you know, you know, coronavirus is not a death sentence. Yes, it is. What kind of, what kind of warfare are you, are you waging against this uh, quote unquote invisible enemy. What kind of warfare are you ready? Uh, have you ever read Art of War? How you how you fighting a, a enemy as a as a coordinated uh, military? 
when, when your battle strategy sucks. So you wanna you wanna hit the you wanna deaden the curve. When doesn't it make sense to centralize all of your resources or the majority of your resources in the in the highest target areas so that you can create a wave from the epicenter? Doesn't that make sense? That's what China did. That's what China did. They locked down the Wuhan province for seven months while practicing effective social distancing, effective hygiene practices. No, that, that's not what happened in America. And, and not only did that not happen, you know, but the, the finger pointing is, 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 woo. You got, you got, you got the, you got the president of the United States on trial for his life. You know, because he walks out of that office, you know, he, he's, he's in cuffs. That's how, that's how, that's how mad people are. He in cuffs. Half the country don't know what the fuck that's about. Real talk. Half the country don't know what that's about. They just want decent health care. I mean, I mean, black people out there went to the, you know, the fucking doctor. You know, first of all, half, many of us, especially the most vulnerable, got to go to the fucking emergency room when they want to get medical attention. They got to go to the emergency room. We ain't talking about people with fucking health care right now. We got the wrong people talking for the masses of our people. So, how are you fighting this enemy? Like, you're, you're, you're letting it spread you know, because once it knocks off another whatever number of black people, which is what we're sitting around waiting for, you know, while you shame people, you know, for being who they are, you know, like we didn't just suffer through fucking crack. Like we weren't already, you know, many of us suicidal, why, why, many of us weren't already insecure and, and overworked and under, you know, appreciated. Like, like so many of us haven't been there already. The coronavirus is just the next latest, you know, you know, many of us like, get in line, get in line. You wanna, you wanna take me out, get in line. That's our posture. And don't tell me, you know, Puffy doesn't understand that. Don't tell me Jay-Z don't understand that. That they don't understand our people now. Like you don't know how we work and how we've had to, you know, you know, how we've had to push and pull and push and pull through every fucking moment of oppression that these people have placed upon us. Now you got the bag. That's all you niggas talk about is the bag. People dying right now. That's, you know, this, ooh, this brings me back to Kohlberg, you know, the seven, what was it, seven principles of morality or seven stages of moral development. There's this Heinz test that he gives. And the test, you know, charts these you know, where people are in terms of their level of morality. You know, one being Christ-like, where I will never break a law and I will never break a rule because I'm just morally sound. And then, you know, level seven, you know, wow, wow, West, doggy dog. So, you know, take the test yourself. Listen to this. 
you are, you know, your, your child is dying, you know, from a sickness. And there's only one cure to the sickness she's dying for, he's dying for. Now the medication costs $2,000 to secure. And the family's broke, they have no money. Father's promising the pharmacist, listen dude, I got you. You know how we do. That's why we love the grocery store sometimes, the bodega. You know what I'm saying? Because they knew the people. You know, they knew when, you know, uh, Big Mama check wasn't coming in until, you know, two days from now. You know, but, you know, m m Mama got character and backbone. You know, so she looked the man in the eye and said, listen, you give me the X, Y, and Z, and on, t on Tuesday, I will pay you back. And why the fuck Wimpy could do it? It ain't no problem. Pay you two dollars on Tuesday for a fucking burger today. And she got them groceries and she went and prepared the first meal of the next month's rations. And she and she and she held the fucking line. Fuck this eight thousand black people die of 16,000, one and two, 50 fucking percent, and there's no fucking rage. The most rage we get is some, you know, mild fucking storm of a fucking chastisement to the fucking victims. Are you fucking kidding me? Really? Yo, see, the wealthy, they only fucking focus on shit that, even in times of crisis, they only focus on shit that helps them move their fucking agenda forward. And you either get down or lay down. Where the fuck you heard that before? So you telling me we've given our trust in the American government to treat us like citizens fairly. Right. We don't have to consent to being governed by this place. We can leave. We can. We have a right to do that. But that's not the situation right now. We are in our homes under the auspices that those in charge of the moment are, you know, leading fairly, okay? And so let's go back to the Heinz test. And the medication is $2,000. You know, dad, mom over there arguing every day, you know, our baby can live to fight another day and have her future or his future if if she can if we can get just get that drug that's right there in the cabinet behind you it's the only thing that'll work it's two thousand dollars we have no money but we will work tirelessly to get that money back to you and the store and the, and the, and the pharmacist says no you know when the pharmacist says no consciously the pharmacist is making a decision, a choice, a shrewd choice, because legally that pharmacist has a right to their property. They don't have to give you that drug, tough luck, tough, tough luck, sorry. You, know, you, should've, you should've did your due diligence. You no, know, not to mention a weight on your fucking back, shackles on your fucking ankles, and, and, you, and, you, and you have ditches in front of you when you start the race. Cause that's where we're starting the race at. You know, these people are, you know, look at Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, I feel like I'm in a prison, but, 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 you know, you, you're in a fucking mansion with, with hella space all around the place. And you're comparing yourselves, yourself, you know, to people who are living on top of each other. They created projects. Remember that shit. You know, projects wasn't just some construct. They created that shit for a purpose. 
Yo, we, 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 we eat everything they throw at us. Rightfully so, because we bore you. Yo, but this moment different. This moment don't feel different to you. Like we ain't even, we ain't even considering the possibility that, you know, th this could be a very specific genocidal process because, you know, even Van Jones said, you know, the conservative fucking Democrat. No, he said, you know, the, the KKK couldn't have uh, created a better, you know, fucking virus if they just wanted to take out black people. The KKK couldn't have. Remember, this is the same country that, you know, cut off the food supply of the Native American. You know, 60 million buffalo slaughtered. YouTube it. Look it. Look it up. Look at all the fucking hides stacked to the goddamn sky. You know, with some punk ass white boy on the top of it, with some Winchester. You know, because he shot 50 fucking uh, buffalo, you know, from the fucking window of a moving train. Sport. Well, who's really civilized? You know, the Native American that moved like a military unit within seconds, packing up family and protecting everyone to follow the buffalo, the sacred buffalo? That majestic animal that, you know, replenished one buffalo could take care of a whole goddamn village. They had a symbiotic relationship with the land and the animal. But they're uncivilized savages. And I'm the governor. I'm the governor. We so fucking pompous, it ain't even funny no more, man. Assuming everybody thinks like that. So, the store owner refuses to give up the medication, locks the store, gets in, you know, his Mercedes Benz, and he drives off of 18th Avenue, you know, down to Livingston, you know, in his gated community and just parks. Goes inside, you know, has his, you know, you know, juice, you know, is his, uh, you know, vegan juice and, and clicks on Netflix with his slippers and a good book, you know, because he earned that wealth, okay? You know, not to mention, you know, Bloomberg just let the cat out of the bag, the billionaire, you know, how, you know, systemic racism has been the, has been the directed toward the black community. See, I don't understand how you can say that out of one side of your mouth and then on the other side of your mouth, you're like, business as usual. Why the fuck doesn't things shut down the minute that kind of revelation happens? And the, and the problems are corrected. And that man and that wife are sitting there defeated, knowing that ultimately is their fault because everyone around them has been pressuring it is their fault. Now they have to swallow that and walk inside. Well, here's what the Heinz test is about. How many of you would say, fuck that? Because this is where I stand, okay? So call me immoral, motherfucker, because where I stand, I'm knocking down that whole fucking store when that mother, as soon as that motherfucker turn his lights on and he pull off, I'm knocking over the whole fucking store. Because now, I'm not only gonna get the fucking medication that my child needs to survive, I'm gonna leave the motherfucking door open and I'm hoping motherfuckers just raid that fucking store because he shouldn't have it no more. Shouldn't have it no more. What kind of fucking humanism is that? And most Americans are on that side of the fence. Eight thousand out of sixteen thousand, and there's no rage in Harlem. 
Yeah, I, 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 I listened to Puff. I did. You know, he the, he the billionaire of, of, of the family. You know? You been on yacht right now. More power to you, my nigga. I hope you live forever, bro. I really do. You know, because, you know, you're a coward at the end of the day, bro. You're a coward. And don't get me wrong, I applaud what you did. I do. I, I'm applaud, I applaud the effort. I do. I really do. That's the contradiction in, 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 in dudes like me. You know, and there's an unconditional love for the people. All of us. Good, bad, ugly. And we'll see how celebrities are ugly in this moment. Now you got a billion dollars. Man, you thought, yo, if you throw a party that costs more money to throw than the contribution you give to this moment and you got it, you know, like, you know, Jay and Milk, me, you know what I mean? They, you know, and, and, and hat go off to them too. Because I love the job, I love the effort. You know what I'm saying? You know, sending X amount of thousand masks to the prisons. You know, that's, that's you know, it's about far I'm going. You know, you know, I, you know, I see, you know, all of y'all are infected by that asinine concept called business. <laughs> business. Business is a euphemism to say fuck people. Fuck humanism. That's what it is. Now that is the tone of the government we have aligned ourselves with. And yet today, coronavirus has ripped the entire fucking blindfold off of everyone in the world. Because you know what? I'm no longer interested in what these, you know, so-called Negro leaders think. I'm no longer interested in what the fuck these leaders think in America. And I'm saying that shit consciously, as an American. Even though I, part of me feels a P, like a P.O. fucking W. Because real talk, what we should be talking about in this moment, as opposed to fucking wills and goddamn property and stocks, what we should be talking about is how the fucking society is about to change forever. And what that fucking change might look like and how the fuck do we fit into it? Because we always know black people are on the tail end of every fucking thing. So this is an opportunity for us to be right in the front and center this shit. Because this society is going to change. Ain't nobody talking about moving back to the fucking south? How about that? Ain't nobody talking about living off the land and trying to figure out a different way of surviving? None of that is relevant, you know? Oh, don't worry, business as usual. You know, we're going to get back to the party. You know, we're going to get back to the club. Just be patient, stay in the house, do what we're telling you to do. And then you'll be able to benefit from this great American landscape that we all have privy to, where you get, where every man is a fucking king. Any night you could have a fucking feast at your disposal. Where in the world did they live like that? You, know, you forgot about the imbalance, capitalism, and you know, monopoly capitalism and, you know, the, the great oligarchies and empire. You forgot about what the fuck that all means at the end? What happened to revolution is eminent, is, is, you know, in, you know, imminent? Or war is imminent? What happened to that? What happened to protracted struggle? What the fuck are we struggling for? More money in a capitalist oligarchy that is unfair to the whole fucking world? What are we fighting for? Better stocks? Or a more equitable country? Because if we're fighting for a more, this just goes to show you, yo, yo, hat goes off to you, Bernie Sanders. Because ultimately, you know, when, 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 when Bernie Sanders got shitted on in the last election, okay, you know, by Her Majesty, you know, you know, you know, Queen Clinton. You know, and her fucking man puppet. Who don't even have the balls to, you know, you know, go go holler at a young boy. How the fuck you know a young boy out here is screaming for some of your attention, dog? All you gotta do is call a motherfucker. 
with social media and all this shit. Yo, you got a cat, Danny Williams, who has been screaming for years that this motherfucker is his father. Got evidence and to connect the motherfucker to that situation. See, Bill Clinton couldn't be a real black man. You let a black man have a fucking baby out with this motherfucker. That black man won't have a fucking day's peace. Because that black woman and all of her fucking family and everybody will be in his goddamn face every day. It's like in Django, Unchained and shit when, you know, baby, I want you to, I want you to treat him like wife. You want me to treat him like wife, folks? Oh no, baby, don't treat him like wife, folks. Then how do you want me to treat him? Yo, 8,000 blacks and 16,000 Americans perished to the coronavirus. I swear to God, I want to know every single one of those names of those people that died. And you know what is even more frightening What's even more frightening is the fact that, you know, the president of the United States, Donald Trump in a press conference the other day said, the worst is yet to come. The next two weeks will be the worst. The next two weeks is gonna challenge us. You know who's gonna challenge? It's gonna challenge black people. And you know what? Everybody's relying on black people to take one for the team. Even those black Negroes who is hollering all this other shit when they should be doing everything in their goddamn power to make sure that those 8,000 more don't fucking die. It's like responding to the, you know, the white chick, you know, the white boy who says, I, I don't experience racism. Why are you always talking about race? And then you wonder why the fuck I question your intelligence. That's what it's like. Stay inside, stay inside. You know, you want to stay socially distant, socially distant. Masks, gloves, and I'm not knocking all that shit because I'm advocating to all of my people to follow all of those protocols. I'm doing that. And I'm on the front line of this motherfucker working. I'm listening and hearing some of these stories of people struggling. But well, what you gonna do about it, Mr. Revolutionary? Motherfucker, I'm trying to tell you about it. So that people in a position can galvanize. I'm doing all I can. Three hundred thousand mass, you sitting on a billion fucking dollars. Fuck out of here. From the people that, you know, hailed your ass gave you their money. How different are you than one of them prosperity preachers you always, you know, ragging on? I'd rather the prosperity preacher, preacher get the fucking money than some Negro who's gonna traipse all over the fucking world and brag about it to the niggas you took it from. Beat your man in them and shit. That's what business taught you how to do? Word. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me, man. It's a new game out here, man. And I ride with mine all the way to the end, man. No way in hell I'ma, you know, go off, traits off, trying to live somewhere comfortably, knowing my people that built me. I got, I had to cut them off. That's bullshit. You know, three motherfuckers, you know, invest in a company. A company. Every, all three got a, a different role. And then somewhere along the line, you know, some white boy whispered at you like, "Yo, fuck your man's in them. Come with me." Why the fuck would you do that? Ooh, that can see that couldn't be me. I ain't built like that. I ain't built like that. I can't do that. Fuck out of here. Ain't no pussy, ain't nothing in the world that can make me do that. Capitalism is unreal, man. You know, so we're talking about, you know, giving our trust in our lives 
to a people that slaughtered 60 million buffalo to cut off the food supply of the Native American. We're talking about a people that created black codes because they couldn't fathom the idea of this former slave Kaffir boy even thinking he on my level. Yo, where do you think that, that did that pasta leave America? Is that gone? And you know, when did it die? The same people that bombed an entire developing, thriving black community, Black Wall Street, just straight bombed the fucking place in broad fucking daylight. But that's gone though, right? Like they can't bomb your fucking city. You know, because you big headed and shit. Because you know, the world is yours. Like they can't bomb your fucking city. Oh, we ain't supposed to talk like that no more. We ain't supposed to talk like that no more. I'm sorry. I never stopped talking like that. Perspective, man, is important, bro. Perspective. You, know, you thinking you riding on easy street and shit, and you just one, you just living in one big trap. And what, what is what is success? Let's define that. Were the were the Native Americans successful, or were they savages? Huh? Were they successful? Because I, I think they were fucking successful. I think they were probably more successful than this bullshit ass American. And yes, we could criticize our country and still love it at the same fucking time. I don't know where you people got this idea that that is not a reality in most of us. I know most people have a flip. I've seen many teachers in my, in my day exhibit and express the most outstanding examples of professionalism. Monday through Friday, And then on a Friday night, in Martini 451, I feel like I'm in motherfucking Mercedes and me, or goddamn Queen of Sheba on a Saturday night, or the pink fucking pub. Miss that goddamn place. We all gotta flip, especially black folk. We had to build that in our arsenal. We're in, a, we're in a country that has done everything in its power to subjugate us to this level. And, and now that Corona is ripping the bandages off the eyes, man, I want to know what the international community got to say about this. I, I want to, you know, it's time to start talking to some people who got, you know, some, something real to say. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I can't connect with a nigga that just want to talk about, you know, building more wealth when 8,000 black people just died in your face. And you don't got no goddamn sensitivity to that. And another 8,000 might die tomorrow. And you ain't got no fucking sensitivity. You don't think it's urgent to rip that shit the fuck? Yo, give me a fucking break, dog. Really? Half of the coronavirus victims in America are black. They die. Black. So what are you really saying, doctor? Because I think... I'm experiencing a moment like when those, when that mother, you know, was, you know, reading a bedtime story to her, you know, children, you know, as the fucking Titanic was sinking, knowing that they're about to drown, you know? And all of the wealthy people, they, they're on the lifeboat already, you know, because business dictated that they not prepare and a government supported this, that they not prepare for the deaths of everybody on that ship in the event that that goddamn ship goes down. They 
calculated that a lot of motherfuckers was gonna die. And they went away ahead with it anyway. What's the fucking use of these FDA, all these organizations that are supposed to be watchdogs to the people? What the fuck is the use of all these places when they can be bought off? And business can be allowed even though major goddamn discrepancies are there. What type of country is that? And you, and you wanna live in that? You wanna live in that, you cool with that. Cause you're not listening to Puffy. I did, I listened to you, bro. You don't sound like you really mad. But that's what, you know, you, you got the, you know, the money to do that, you know, you know, let me go buy Van Jones. Let me go buy all these, all these, you know, you know, you know, talking heads that are gonna, that are gonna build the narrative. Cause that's all these Negroes do. They build the narrative to justify this inhumane slaughter. People are gonna be brought up on war crimes if I got anything to do with this shit moving forward. These are war crimes. And there are a whole lot of people complicit. You know, so I propose in my line of thinking, you know, because I am radical. You know, so, you know, Facebook for me, look, I'm a writer. I got my own goddamn company. And you know what's even pissing me off more? I don't even... Li Listen, dog. I'm down in Newark every goddamn day. Driving people around, making sure that I'm doing what I can do for this struggle we got going on right now. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, which means every day. Okay? I put my own life on the line, dog. So I'm talking. Because you know what? Those are the people that should be talking. I ain't hiding, and I'm not saying that you're hiding if you're on. I'm encouraging people to do that. I just know who I am. I mean, I'm down every day. But as far as being in the midst of the problem, I'm not in the midst of the problem. I'm in the suburbs, way in the suburbs. I get, I, I, I get to see my babies every day. You know, my children, every day. I know exactly where every one of them. I got three kids, I know where exactly, two of them right here, right now, even right, right here, right now, in this goddamn room, in this goddamn house, listening to this broadcast. Cause I need to put my eyes on them every day. Especially during this crisis. Fathers. You know, you, the sacrifices we make when we go hard for hours. And I take all the precautions myself. You know, I get, I, 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 I get fresh, sanitized. I push all of the CDC. I do all that. But then that my flip side always, you know, things radical because my, my poet is radical. I got my own company. I got two books out. I got multiple ways to make chips. I got music. I make music. I'm a poet too, and a rapper. And don't tell me this. You can't be old and rapping. That's bullshit. Rapping ain't got no goddamn age bracket on it. Maybe if we may only allowed older rappers to rap, maybe we wouldn't be subject to all of the savagery that happens when a bunch of you know brothers from the block want to run up and down the street because they conditioned that way. And I ain't no fucking hater because I'm always pressing the people's message. So it disgusts me when you know. Johnny come lately, so who don't who don't who don't know a goddamn thing about my my journey. I got the audacity to try to to try to pigeonhole me into some you know bullshit. Like you better than nigga, you ain't better than at all. I don't know the fuck world you think you in. Some of y'all get y'all goddamn ego stroke so goddamn much you come off like Trump. You know, scandal after scandal. Been drinking lead water all my goddamn life. I am fucking new.
One of my ex-wives said to me, and I didn't even notice this shit. I was living in a whole nother state. You know, she told me that you ain't never left North. Mentally. Never. That's how conditioned I am. Which is why, which is why I'm compelled to give encouragement on a day-to-day -day basis. When I'm politicking with, you know, the Spanish shit I'm about to drop off. Above Dawiz, who got a baby. She don't got a, she ain't have a mask on. What am I gonna tell her? No, no. You, you can't, you can't. I'm not gonna take you on because you need a mask. I got a mask on. I don't have an extra, I wish I did. Cause I probably would've gave it. And so maybe, 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 maybe you can start giving some of your, you know, some of your drivers throughout the city masks to give out too. That's a no limit soldier. And I got hella pre-existing uh, goddamn, uh, you know, uh, conditions. And none of that shit fazed me. I don't know where that kind of adrenaline come from. But it's like, like that adrenaline when, when, when my child was put in my arms for the first time. That propelled me to say, you know what? I'm going to protect this one to the end. All of them. From that point. My purpose. Everything else is part of the struggle. And I give it all to the struggle. Eight thousand black people. Wish I can get eight thousand tattoos, all them goddamn people that lost their lives. You know what I'm saying? I ain't afraid of no ghosts, I'm sorry. That's my own personal stance. Leave me the fuck alone, that's my stance. Eight thousand out of 16,000. Shout out Hassan Campbell, that's the only, that's the only dude that I hear who's screaming to the top of his lungs. Yeah, I, I feel like Sarah Connor screaming at the coming of Skynet and ain't a goddamn person listening and the, and the Terminator is running around wiping out black people like literally wiping out black people how the fuck in 2020 considering our whole history how do we end up at this point and don't tell me this bullshit about a bunch of kids running around outside of, because you know what Nook has been doing an amazing fucking job alright at quarantining so don't Give me that bullshit. Yes, there's some hot spots, you know, but, you know, city officials, they on top of it. There's mad compliance. And I don't discourage the tough love messages. I don't. I share your fucking, I share those videos every day. This is a struggle we all in. And Puff, you're right. It is about unity. You know what I'm saying? But see, the problem with our people is we can't take criticism constructive. I can't criticize. I'm a fucking scholar. And I'm a participant. I can't, you know, criticize now? What, I'm censored? Where the fuck does that come from? Where has that ever been part of our lexicon as a people? You wouldn't think about doing that to Farrakhan. Oh, was he, was he, you know, was he exciting? A, a riot because he spoke truth to power? No. I would like to know where Farrakhan at right now, though. Because I would love to hear what he got to say about 8,000 black people dying in America right now. How, how could y'all just, you know, not consider the magnitude of that? And if you got a belief system that prevents you Yo, I'm I'm in I'm in fucking I'm in I'm in chaos right now. Over that. I'm in chaos. I, I got I got mental health issues because I'm in chaos over that. Wow. <laughs> Wonder what Frederick Douglass was when he said, you know, this fucking Fourth of July is not my goddamn 
Holiday, what was he thinking? Was he mentally ill? What about David Walker? Who wrote an appeal that he knew was gonna get him killed? Or one of my favorite, Demby. Who, who ran into the middle of the fucking lake in defiance of the slave master. Thank you, Frederick Douglass, for that story. Took a bullet for the team, took a bullet for the family. Yo. Yeah, I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted on all levels. You know, and, 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 and even, even now, you know, I am not proposing to my people, my brothers and sisters, to run into, you know, and run, run into the middle of hell. I'm not proposing they do that. But I remember a conversation I had with Brother Sekou. You know what I'm saying? Powerful brother, you know, taught at Harvard. You know, and I remember, you know, because, you know, in my spare time a couple of years ago, you know, I, I got a, I got a, a degree in theology in the Dr. Bendel School, the Newark School of Theology. And I met a powerful minister brother, a young brother, doing powerful work out in Georgia, you know, Brother Robert Woods. And I remember when me and Brother Woods drove out, you know, to, you know, upstate New York, you know, for this retreat. Um, and I met Brother Sekou, and he was giving a speech, and, you know, when the question answers, and I, I listened to everything he said, he wrote a book called, you know, God's Guns and Gays, something like that. And I remember when the I asked the brother, I was like, you know, what, you know, is, is Fanon still relevant? You know, to the to to, to the black dias to the black diaspora here. Is, is he still relevant? And you know, in, in not so many words, he, he he said yes. You know, because you know we got a plethora of science out there. You know, you just got to study. You know, we're not ready for revolution, whatever that means to you. We're not ready for that because we're, we're fragmented and we're still, you know, dazed. You know, we just got hit in the head with Nagin's back, you know, after the Black Power Movement. And they assassinated everybody, they assassinated King, they assassinated Malcolm, you know, they assassinated Lumumba. Oscar Romero. The names go on and on of the people they killed internationally and nationally in order to interrupt the people's movement that had swelled so much that it reached America. You know, all, you know, you know, Ho Chi Minh, the Viet, you know, what we, you know, took Vietnam through, that treachery. A whole, a whole generation was bludgeoned by Nagin's bat and black people especially, you know, because if white people catching hell, you know, black, black, black people catching it 10 times over. This proves that. You know, Bloomberg, you know, and his coup d'etat, the Democratic Party, yelled to the top of his lungs for weeks, ad after ad, I can't wait to go back and, and collect all of those ads. But everybody was yelling systemic racism, and then all of a sudden, coronavirus, and bam, 8,000 fucking black people dead before the next election, which is in November. So there's 8,000 votes in, in, the, in the grave. Potentially another 8,000 in the grave. And this week, like I said, we don't even know what kind of numbers we're looking at uh, based off of, you know, the projections that the president gave us. It's gonna be horrible, as we said. Horrible. The worst we've suffered through. So he says that on, you know, let's say, you know, he says that over the weekend. We get these numbers finally in 8,000 out of 16,000 dead or blacks. And you're telling me that the only thing you want to do is continue to tell people and continue to be vigilant about social distancing and remaining inside the house. That's all you got to say in this moment. <laughs> wow. That's all you got to say in this moment. You know, keep, uh, you know, you know, you got contracts, you got money, you got, you got, did that. that's all you can say right now. When 8,000 more about the die possibly. Tomorrow.
it feel like you just so numb to the death that goes on in our people. Are you so disgusted by our people's behavior that you don't care that another 8,000 gonna die because the narrative is already written to justify your inaction. It's their fault. They don't listen, they hard-headed. Well, yeah, they days, you know, fucking crap. And you know, miss me with that Victim mentality bullshit. <laughs> Victim mentality. <laughs> wow. Where we've come. Where the struggle landed. Wow, that's the struggle today. That's it. And I'm the one that's getting beat up because I propose, you know, something drastic. You know, while people sitting around waiting for these checks. No, I, you know, the same way they would sat around and waited for the 40 acres and the mule. It's always that goddamn carrot dangling in front of our people that keep us, keep hope alive in America, this system. They got us. You know, ain't got nothing treacherous going on. Okay, this ain't no genocide no moment. Nah, ain't that. Can't be. No. Nah, boss, it can't be. It can't be that. You just keep on giving us that money, we gonna keep on doing the people's work. We gonna get rich fucking great. You know, I ain't even mad at that. Do it. I'm encouraging you, but anyway. But my flip gonna tell you how foolish you look and how foolish you sound. And I'm gonna end this on this note, though. You know, I gave a serious proposal. I did. A seriously drastic proposal. Because that's what Puffy asked for. Drastic. You know, we need to drastic. What's more drastic then spreading those black people out a little bit further. Huh? Like literally, we got a whole city to work with. Why can't you spread those people out? Now you do it. You suspend and you eliminate private property. In Newark, do that in Newark, in Irvington, in the Oranges. We know the communities are gonna hit the hardest. You telling me You got a four family apartment and there's you know there's four, five, six, seven people in each apartment. And there's only, you know, you know, two bedrooms. You know how you know how we are. Okay, when we struggle. When we struggle together. Everybody's important. You know, there's some houses right now where there's like nine people in it and it's two bedroom. You got nine people in two bedrooms. You know, and four of those people you know, go out, you know, throughout the day. The other four probably go out sometime, whatever. Everybody goes out at some point. Nine people in one two-bedroom apartment. Listen to this, Ellen DeGeneres. Nine people living in a two-bedroom apartment, okay? And they're comfortable. They're making it work. They're working. They're making, it, they're making the their, their grind under capitalism. They're making it work. All four apartments, same building. All four apartments, same. These people all over each other. All over each other. Now, you're saying to everybody, deal with it and just stay in the house. Deal with it. If you deal with it, you won't die. Possibly, you won't die. Because all you gotta do is catch it to die if you're black. And you got pre-existing conditions because you can't even go to the fucking uh, you know hospital for a test or the or the or the or the site for a test unless you got some high ass fever, you know, death fever, and your and your and, and your and your lungs are already got them swimming in fluid. Then you can go. See, at that point, doesn't the doctor already know they're gonna die? The doctor already know they're gonna die as soon as they walk in the door. Now they didn't wait it to die because they had to get the symptoms first in order to get tested. Now they go to the doctor and the doctor says, okay, you got corona. Dude, you just gonna go home. Man, give me a break. Give me a break. You know, Kohlberg, 
deduced or, you know, from his evidence that America as a whole falls at around two when it comes to moral development. We sorry as a people, and that needs to be talked about. That needs to be transparent. And that doesn't mean I'm unpatriotic either. Because that's what these people try to do. They try to pigeonhole you into some false narrative because, you know, that's how they fight. You know, you surround yourself with the rich. You said that yourself. Don't surround yourself with people that, don't surround yourself with the broke. Sometimes the broke motherfucker is giving them more knowledge and power than you are. Huh. Eliminate proper property in order. Take those families in that building and shuffle their asses to all of these vacant, you know, apartments just waiting to be rented out to the next, you know, high priced, you know, upwardly mobile, uh, you know, you know, development, you know, financially developmental. Man, go to hell, bruh. People dying right now, man. Drastic times call for drastic measures. And I ain't hearing that shit at all. You know what I'm saying? So, this was episode 12 of, you know, one angry black Republican. And that even goes to why I'm aligning myself with the Republicans. Because you know what? While you're sitting here trying to tell me that those people don't care about us so much and they want us to die, you want us to die too. You want us to die too. Think about that, bruh. Think about that. 